Hi guys. It is turning into a lovely morning here, Tuesday morning, July 7th, 2020, where what you hear in the background, I'm, yes, I'm not making this up. What they're doing is they just ripped all of the pavement off of my road in front of my house here on uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm. They ripped the pavement off the road, carried it off in a truck, and now they're dumping about 18 inches of dirt onto the road. So they are busy turning paved roads into dirt roads here in the great state of New York, and I heartily recommend turning every paved road on the planet back into a dirt road. I think this is uh, Agenda 21 in action is what the conspiracy wackos would say. But anyway, that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm uh, just letting you know what you're hearing in the background is uh, planet eating in reverse uh, as global industrial civilization uh, goes on about its business doing what it does. But anyway, you have stumbled into Collapse Chronicles. My name is Sam Mitchell. This is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, doing what we do uh, a few times a week now, and that's bringing you... <laughs> this is really hilarious watching this paved road getting turned into a dirt road. Anyway, what do we do here? We chronicle the collapse of a planet, and uh, a regular commentator here on Collapse Chronicles, though he has never heard of me, uh, is I finally, this man finally identifies himself as an economist. His name is Umer, however you pronounce the word, the name H-A-Q-U-E, Hake Hockey, I don't know, but Umer, uh, he is uh, back at it this week with his newest essay, If Life Feels Bleak, It Is Because Our Civilization Is Beginning to Collapse. 2030 will be even worse than 2020, and 2040 will be even worse than that. But you get the point. I love the photograph that Umer used to illustrate his story of life and collapse in uh, July of 2020. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm, I'm getting a lot of complaints about the M word that I use the M word too much on Collapse Chronicles. So a photograph <coughs> says a million words. That, that photograph there is, uh, is truly, uh, <laughs> that, that, that truly is a, a classic picture of life in Collapse. Okay, take it away, Umer. <coughs> There's an old line from a movie called Office Space. Do you remember that one? That I have always loved. Quote, every day since I began work is worse than the day before it. Close quote. <clears throat> that is kind of an apt summary for everything at the moment. <clears throat> Life is not a happy thing right about now. It is stressful, strange, upside down. I am weary with boredom, exhausted by isolation, tired of all the nothing, and I bet you are too. So, is it just me or living through the end of human civilization kind of sucks? There's not or there should not be, by now, any real debate on the point that we are now living 
through the probable end of human civilization. And, and what Umer does, and I'll put the link on here, he links you uh, to all of these various articles and essays to, uh, to illustrate the points that he makes. So you can go through this essay and find all of these other studies leading uh, him to this uh, obvious conclusion about where we are heading as a civilization in the 21st century. <clears throat> The end of human civilization is now easy enough to see over the next three to five decades. Three to five decades. We shall see about that. <clears throat> it, meaning the end of human civilization, is made of climate change, mass extinction, ecological collapse, and the economic depressions, financial implosions, political upheavals, pandemics, plural, plagues, plural, floods, fires, and social breakdowns, all those will ignite, meaning various phases of ecological collapse will ignite social collapse. I've talked about this debate before, you know, there's a school of thought that social collapse will lead to ecological collapse, then there's people like Umer who believe that ecological collapse will lead to social collapse. I'm kind of in the uh, ball of wax uh, theory that it is all tied up together, every one of these collapses are ongoing and feed each other. But of course, it being 2020, Umer wants to give his reading of how the corona panic figures into all of this. Okay. The corona panic is a foreshadowing, a taste of a dismal future, a warning, and a portrait also. Life as we know it is falling apart. Life as we know it will continue to fall apart for the rest of our lives. How do you live through that? I am not your therapist, sadly, or luckily. I am just an economist. So let me paint you a picture. So this is the economist, Umer, uh, painting a picture of what the corona panic is foreshadowing, and hopefully it's foreshadowing ripping up paved roads and turning them into dirt roads. All right, what did the corona panic rupture? A sense of easy normality, of stability, of placidity, that things could just go on as before, now at least we know how quickly life can simply come to a screeching halt. How fast everything can change. True, in some countries like America, things had been on a steady downward trajectory anyways, but don't mistake the crucial lesson of this pandemic. Life as we know it has now come to an end. That is not to say lockdowns and so forth will last forever, but they won't end like we all hope overnight either. They will be with us in fits and starts as this virus ebbs and flows for years, or at least until a vaccine is ready, or, as Umer knows, till a real pandemic arrives and makes the corona panic look like a bad hair day in comparison. Those are my words, not Umer's. 
or at least until a vaccine is ready. It takes about five to ten years to develop one usually, so the corona panic will probably define this decade. Uh, I, I, again, the corona panic by the end of this decade will barely be a footnote in the history books compared to what's coming in this decade. Again, that is me, not Umer. Anyway, according to Umer, the corona panic will probably define this decade sapping the life from economies, causing a depression here, a stagnation there, another one here, yet again there, draining the cohesion from societies as people grow tired of yet another lockdown, redefining politics, shifting power to authoritarians and nationalists, ripping a connected, cooperative world apart. But that is just a tiny, tiny taste of what is to come. Yes, <clears throat> the corona panic calls our lives to come to a standstill, but by and large, our systems still work. That's not to say we have great and magnificent systems, or even really good ones, but mostly our systems were kept functioning, like the system of turning paved roads into dirt roads. This is now the steamroller rolling out the dirt. All right, <clears throat> mostly they work mostly they have been kept functioning systems, meaning in this case social systems, economic systems, and financial systems from healthcare to banks to jobs to wages and pensions and so on. Those are what I will call in this tiny essay superficial or secondary systems. That is not to say that they're unimportant. It is to say that they depend on other deeper systems, but I'll come to that. What is going to be different the next time around is that these superficial systems will simply stop working. I have been making this same uh, prediction now for how many, for 10 years, uh, as I'm dealing with the New York and Texas DMVs right now, trying to get my vehicle switched over from Texas to New York. My license expired on my Texas registration in March. It is now July. Uh, nobody seems to care. I have been driving around on, an ex on expired plates for months now, and uh, as, as I've been saying for years, things like vehicle registrations, driver's licenses, all of this crap that eats our brains every day, when all of this stuff crashes down over something as minor as the corona panic, all of this stuff is going to mean nothing as Mad Max uh, unrolls. I think Umer agrees with me on this point. Like, for instance, in Ithaca now, the whole parking meter system has completely tanked. You can park anywhere in Ithaca, New York, for free. They have just abandoned parking meters and like vehicle registrations. Nobody cares. All right, but let's look ahead. A decade from now, by the 2030s, climate change is going to go nuclear. From relatively mild, although already badly disruptive, to catastrophic, and as it does, 
where it does, when it does, so too all those systems we depend on will simply rupture and break. Suddenly, bang, just like the corona panic did to our lives, but not our systems today. Tomorrow, the difference will be that those systems will come to a halt. Not just our temporary access to them, those systems will be offline, crashed, broken, devastated, wrecked, depleted, bankrupt, and paralyzed. So what happens when a continent burns? Take the example of America or Australia. Both have already had an experience of megafires. Luckily, those have been managed to be controlled or have burned themselves out. By the 2030s, though, we will not be so lucky. Megafires will be a regular seasonal event and they will just go on raging through canyons and hills and plains. What then? Well, then financial systems simply break. Who is going to pay for the cost of repairing millions of incinerated homes, schools, offices, universities, clinics? The answer, nobody. Yes, <clears throat> just like we have Rust Belt towns today, places that are being abandoned by deindustrialization, so too we will have fire belt and flood belt towns and cities and villages tomorrow. And as those places are destroyed, they're going to take financial systems, healthcare systems, jobs, incomes, pensions, wages, and so forth down with them. Not temporarily, like now during the corona panic, but for good. <clears throat> Just like Rust Belt towns have been abandoned, so tomorrow's fire and flood belt will be uninhabitable and the exodus fleeing from it will break most of our superficial systems. Banks will not be able to cope with the cost of insuring all that, healthcare systems with the cost of treating all the ill, employment systems with providing for all those people, energy grids with the wreckage, and so on. And Bang! There go a civilization's superficial systems. Of course, <clears throat> some places will be lucky and they will escape much of the damage. Canada, Scandinavia, just some of the beneficiaries, but they are a tiny relative portion of humanity. The losers will be immense in number and our systems simply do not have the capability to cope, to provide, to offer them <coughs> income, shelter, housing, medicine, food. Even in rich countries, what happens then? Well, if you were Bill Gady instead of Umer, you would say, we will proceed to eat every single one of our fellow earthlings we share this planet with, every last individual of our fellow earthlings will end up in the stew pot, and when we finish eating them, who do you think is next on the menu? That is Bill Gady, not Umer. Okay, back to Umer. The Economist. So what happens then? A depression does. 
Welcome to the climate depression of the 2030s. It is much, much worse than the Great Depression, so-called, of the 1930s, since huge chunks of the planet are now, meaning will be in the fire and flood belt, huge portions of humanity will have nowhere to live, nothing to subsist on, well, after they've eaten their fellow earthlings, and no way to earn a living either. Demand, you know, for all of this planet-eating crap falls through the floor and the vicious cycle of falling incomes and lower employment sets in with a vengeance. How much does that kind of life suck? A lot more than it sucks now. That's not to say today is fun, but tomorrow is going to make today look like a fond memory. What are you going to do when banking systems, healthcare systems, pension systems all break down? It's okay, you'll make it. It won't be fun, but you will probably survive. <clears throat> You're well off enough to be reading this, right? It's the next decade, the 2040s, you have to really worry about. <clears throat> okay, take it away, Doomsday Prophet, Umer. <clears throat> By the 2040, mass extinctions will finally begin to bite, you know, due to us eating all of our fellow earthlings. By the 2040, mass extinction will finally begin to bite. Climate change by then will have destabilized temperatures and seasons enough that the current rate of mass extinction, which is already horrifically high, will explode. Did you know that fish cannot spawn when waters are too warm? <clears throat> That's okay. We're overfishing it. We're overfishing them to death anyway. <clears throat> Life on planet Earth will, by the 2040s, begin to keel over from the bottom. Its great towers and chains of life will crash and topple, having had the roots and foundations ripped out from under them. All the little things are dying off fastest and first. The insects, bees, fish, worms, and so forth. But all those chains and ladders of subsistence right up to us depend on them. Who is going to turn the soil when the worms are gone? Who is going to clean the rivers from turning to mud when the fish are gone? Who is going to nourish the plants that keep the forest healthy when the insects are gone? The answer is, nothing is. Bang! Life on planet Earth begins to die off. Oops! We are part of life on Earth, too. Now the real fireworks begin. I have talked about our superficial or secondary systems. Now, meaning as the 2040s unfold according to Umer, now our primary systems, the most fundamental ones, begin to break, go bankrupt, end up depleted crash and burn. Energy, air, food, water, medicine, the things which keep us clean, nourished, fed, watered, and alive in the most ba basic ways. These systems now begin to break down. The soil turns to dust. 
no harvest, no food. Now, meaning in the 2040s, you will have to compete bitterly just for food. The rivers turn to mud because the fish are gone. Now, clean water becomes a luxury. Raw materials become inaccessible. The basic compounds medicines are made of become scarce, and so forth. <clears throat> so what happens then? Right about now, you pay maybe 25% of your income for these basics. Water, food, energy, air, and so on. Maybe more if you're relatively poor. But by then, most of your income, easily upwards of 50%, will go to these basics. The price of all these things will skyrocket because there simply will not be enough to go around. And having a steady supply of them will seem like a luxury. Now you, the rich person of the world back then in the 2020s, are learning what it is like to live like a poor person globally always did. They always had to carefully ration their food, water, energy, and medicine. <clears throat> do I wash dishes today or do I bathe? Do I eat or treat my sick child? Those are the decisions the poor 80% of humanity have always lived with. You were lucky not to. Maybe you did not know that. Now you, meaning in the 2040s, will live like them too, making just those choices between the very basics over and over again every day, rationing, squeezing, cutting out every last morsel of waste, trying to conserve. But don't worry, you will probably succeed at that. You are resourceful enough. The problem is that when you are spending most of your income on the basics, then what do you save? And what do you have left over to invest in? Never mind having fun. You are living like one of the global poor now, which is what climate change and mass extinction will make nearly everyone. It's not that the poor don't have fun, but they don't spend a lot of money on it. For you, now, meaning in the 2040s, subsistence has become the daily project, mission, and goal. The old goal of saving, investing, maybe even splurging, all of those are distant, distant memories. What's that kind of life like? It's not pleasant, that's for sure. It has its moments of happiness and even abandon and joy. But by and large, it's what it sounds like. A bitter, desperate struggle for mere subsistence. But you will get through it. Maybe you'll learn something new about the value of human connection, of warmth, of the simpler things. It is the next decade, the 2050s, you really have to worry about. So, of course, let's see, I'm going to be uh, 91 in the year 2050, but the young man sitting here listening to this rant is going to be younger than me, which is why he's probably building a, a straw bale house with a spring for his water supply. Uh, anyway, 
So what does this young man have to look forward to when he is younger than me? The 2050s will be the age of the final goodbye. By now, the Earth's great ecosystems will be in irreversible and catastrophic decline. The ocean currents, the reefs, what? little is left of any polar ice. The forests, which are the earth's lungs, will be charred. The rivers, which are its veins, will have turned to dust. The prairies, which are its limbs, will be made of flood water. The oceans, which are its organs, will be bitter with acid. The final goodbye, as in, there is no coming back from this. Sure, life on Earth will survive in some form, but not as we know it, and not in the way that we depend on it. It will be very, very different. Maybe jellyfish, the inedible kind, will roam the seas. Maybe bacteria that thrive in heat will live in the embers of the permanent megafires. Who knows? What is for certain is this. Now the collapse of our civilization's primary systems, meaning in the 2050s when he says now, <clears throat> now the collapse of our civilization's primary systems of energy, air, food, water, and medicine goes permanent and goes nuclear. <clears throat> Do you know how to put an ocean back together? A rainforest? A prairie? Neither do I. Once they are gone, they are <coughs> gone. And having gone, <coughs> so are the most basic of things they nourish us with. Our energy, air, water, food, medicine, and so on. And those critical resources begin to be depleted as those critical resources begin to be depleted for good, our systems, our, you know, human systems will crash. How do you price food or water when there's not enough of it to go around for good? The answer is you don't. You take it if you can. And if you cannot take it, you die. Our carefully planned technocratic systems from the technical end, markets, prices, algorithms, currencies, options, to the practical end, you know, stockpiles, pipes, reservoirs, and so forth, all simply crash break, fall apart. <clears throat> they are no good anymore. What good is a price for the last antibiotic in a country? What good is a healthcare system full of finely educated and trained managers and accountants and CEOs for allocating antibiotic, antibiotics or operations when there aren't going to be any more. Maybe you see my point. Nobody cares now, <clears throat> even if you have money, because your money is just the polite and agreeable fiction of a civilized society. Now all that matters is power and the will to use it. <clears throat> now Again, this is the 2050s. Things break down in big, big ways. <clears throat> Nations fall apart as cities and towns turn on one another. The very idea of democracy comes to an end and tribalism, factionalism, 
every kind of stupid and backward superstition from the depths of history replaces it. All that is left is everyone against everyone else, each tribe for themselves in a desperate, doomed, idiotic battle for the last few morsels of life-giving stuff left on a planet that is turning to dust, fire, and death. Think of America right about now, how it has become this stupid, desperate, never-ending battle for self-preservation only everywhere. The corona panic in its own way is trying to prepare us for that. It is trying to teach us how not to end a civilization by taking care of one another, not in some meaningless hallmark kind of way, but in a razor sharp one. Invest now in the things you will need tomorrow, all of you. Food, water, air, energy, and medicine. Where do they come from? From the lungs, limbs, organs, and blood of the earth, the forest, skies, oceans, and rivers, from the creatures, the animals, beginning with the smallest, which feed and nourish the bigger right up to us. Invest in all of that and do it now. Do it like never before in history. Put aside your stupid swabbles and your pointless pursuits. Put down the remote control, the phone, the drug, the fix. You are here on planet Earth. Are you really here on planet Earth? The corona panic is a warning from the end of human civilization backwards in time to the beginning of the end of human civilization. It teaches us how you can see the end from here. You can see the lights going out, the lights of civilization, prosperity, democracy, freedom, justice, truth, beauty, goodness, all gone, incinerated by the fire, drowned by the flood, and all that is left is a desperate, stupid, terrible, idiotic struggle through the mud and ashes for self-preservation, each against each other, all against all. I take your water, you take my energy, they take our food, we take their medicine. Around and around the maypole we go, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. That is how our civilization ends. Does it suck to live at the end of human civilization? Of course it does. Not just because life is wearying, boring, draining, or tense, but because you know, you know, you have uh, drank the Kool-Aid, the knowledge with a capital K, the truth with a capital T, you know all of this is true. It doesn't have to be like this, yet it is. But maybe then it always did have to be like this. Maybe this is the only way we have to fail so they can learn. 
I take consolation, I suppose, in the fact, yes, this is the only hopium in this entire article, I take consolation, I suppose, in the fact that the next civilization will be, will have to be wiser, gentler, truer, better than us. It is a shame, though, that the rest of our lives are going to, well, you know, suck. There you go. Thank you, uh, Umer, and I am glad to see that Umer has pretty much lost his hopium at this point. Uh, you know, the last uh, essay I read by Umer about six weeks ago, uh, he was still clinging to the hopium that we are going to turn this freight train around. Apparently, Umer has hopped on the Doomer train and learned that we, meaning anybody listening to this, we are toast. We're done for. He is still suffering a delusion that there is going to be a next human civilization, which of course there is not going to be, but give the young man a few more weeks to figure out that we are the last civilization of humans in history. So anyway, if you enjoyed Umer's comments on the collapse of civilization and the planet, please spend a few minutes thumbing this video up and do uh, subscribe to Collapse Chronicles if you feel like it. But most of all, get out there and enjoy this planet while you still can. And I'm going to get out there and enjoy the brand new dirt road that has been built in front of uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm, uh, which was a paved road an hour ago. I now have a new dirt road to uh, head to the post office to try to uh, track down the lost title to my truck so I can uh, tra register my car in New York, although nobody cares at this point whether I register my gas-sucking truck in New York or not. And the little dog needs to pee. He is telling me, Pop, I have not peed since last night. Bye, guys. I don't want you getting run over by a steamroller in the front yard. So this is the view out my out my living room window. The uh, the planet eaters out my living room window turning my paved road into a dirt road. At least I can get out of my driveway now. Bye guys.